in our studio audience for reaction tonight. Uh, hi, welcome everybody. Good to see you. Everybody see the video of ISIS slaughtering even in front of children in the name of religion. We saw that, right? Yeah. We see ISIS on the march. We see what's happening in Iraq. We've all witnessed now the rise of radicalism in Iraq. How many of you saw in Kenya the 48 bodies stacked on top of each other? You all see that video? Okay. How many of you saw what happened? We're now told the former Nigerian president said that it's unlikely we'll get those girls back, those schoolgirls. Everybody aware of that? All in the name of radical Islam, right? Then we've got in Afghanistan, what, 11 men, fingers chopped off. They dared to vote in the general election. That just happened recently. Indonesia, you heard about the report, 430 churches burned. Let me, let me start with Carl Higby and Jonathan Gilliam. Both of you former Navy SEALs. Both of you have fought on the ground. Are we seeing the rise of radical Islam in a way that's even worse than what we saw after 9-11, or what led up to 9-11? Absolutely. Um, what happened in 9-11 was a buildup of a long time, but now we've gone into those countries, we've made even more people angry by fighting the war on their terms and you know, wishy-washy policies between two presidencies. I think uh, we're going to see an even, an even steeper rise in violence because of it. And I think we call radical. The reality is we should start calling it for what it is. It's not necessarily terrorism. It's not necessarily radical. It is a global movement called the caliphate. And what you see when we go over and we fight these little skirmishes and we occupy bases and leave, we create a vacuum and we basically do the dirty work for these really, really bad people who want to go and change the way, the face of the globe. That's what, that's what, it's interesting, General Petraeus said this week about, you know, we can't become the Air Force from one side over the other in, in the Shia-Sunni battle that's but been where, ongoing. For where we've created the vacuum, we now have to go back in and seal that vacuum. Mike Gauss, welcome. I'm glad you're feeling better. You weren't feeling well for a while. Welcome back to the debate. It's good to have you. Um, you like to always say when you're on the program, you are a moderate Muslim. Yes, I am. Have the voices of the Islamic community, are they loud enough to take on the radicalism that's hijacking their religion? Well, they're not loud enough. We need to gather momentum. Shows like yours have given voices to moderate Muslims like me, and it is good. And we need to gather up momentum, get more Muslims to start speaking, to let those radicals know that they are... We don't care about them. There are very few, and there is no encouragement for them, and they shouldn't do what they are doing. But your voice, to me, is unique. I don't think, well, Judith Miller, you're shaking your head. No, no you, not, you, you hear unique. a lot of moderate Muslim voices speaking out against radicalism and terrorism and the hijacking of your religion, because the world I live in, I see a lot of people that are afraid they're going to be labeled an apostate, which means that they would be subject to death, right, under Islam? I think that is the problem. It is the fear that so many Muslims who are moderate, who do agree with what you're saying and what Brigitte's saying and what others are saying, the fear they have of speaking out, of the reaction of their own community, until we get and win that battle inside, and only they can win it. We're going to go on creating the impression that the Islamists, the jihadists, are the majority, and they are not. Is that right, Brigitte? Uh, not necessarily, because if the majority are peaceful, loving Muslims, then what do they have to worry about in their own community? Look, look at the Muslims in the United States. If there was ever a group of people who are protected under our Constitution to speak freely and be protected, and supposedly ma the majority of them are moderate, how come they are not bonding together? And if any radical hurt any of them when they speak up in defense of the United States, their radicals should be so squashed, So you're saying Mike is an anomaly? Moderate. Mike Gauss, you've debated him many times on my show. <laughs> Is he an anomaly? Uh, uh, Mike, no. there are people like Mike, but where are the funders of people like Mike? Where is the funding? You're going to tell me there's not one mega millionaire from Saudi Arabia or the Islamic world that can give Mike five million dollars and say, you know what, I believe in your moderate message. I want to help you build a grassroots organization. Where does and CARE get its funding? Exactly. CARE got its funding from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Well, CARE is not getting, uh, I think they used to get the funding from Middle East, but they're not. But the moderate Muslims are gaining momentum. There are more and more people. I'm, I'm in the community, Muslim community. There is a lot of support for what I am doing. Does, does there are the Muslim many community more. support me? Because I've been very outspoken against radicalism and Sharia and the treatment of women under Sharia. Um, are, are in they, fact, are they, when you talk to people, they love the show. Absolutely. Those Muslims, right. there are many I have talked. And I told them very clearly what you said earlier, that you distinguish between radical Muslims 
and Muslims and Islam. But I'm afraid that the, the, the more moderate Muslims are afraid to speak out, and I think the numbers of, that have been radicalized are far greater numbers than we see, which is why we're watching the whole, we're doing this special, because th this to me, you know, when you see people laid out as we saw this week and slaughtered, cold blood murder, or the people, you know, that we saw, the 48 people in Kenya that were slaughtered in cold blood because they didn't give the right answer. That, to me, is the, the equivalent of a modern-day Nazi. Pam Geller. Well, I think that <clears throat> Mr. Gauss lives in his own private Islam. He doesn't have a theological leg to stand on. We saw, not just in Kenya, but we saw in the Westgate Mall, and we saw in Iraq, that the jihadists were separating who they would slaughter and who they wouldn't. They were separating the Muslims from the non-Muslims. Long-time readers of my website, Atlas Shrugs, are not surprised by these developments. This was expected. Obama has been aiding a jihadist agenda, came out yesterday under a Freedom of Information Act, the close ties that Obama had with Libya, Muslim Brotherhood, who were involved in the attack on our embassy. That's the real smoking gun, that Christopher Stevens had met with the Libyan Muslim Brotherhood in July, the same people that were involved in the Benghazi murder. The idea that there are moderates, there are, there are moderate Muslims that secretly agree. According to so many worldwide and uh, um, national polls, there are many that support jihad. Let me, let me bring up a, a political question and I'll throw it to my good friend Tamara Holder. Hi, Tamara. Hi, Sean. Um, because under this president, it seems very clear, he, he recently this week let out uh, radicals in Afghani prisons. We know that he, we had the Bergdahl swap, for example. Five of the most hardened criminals, terrorists, detainees. Why would the president do this? Why would the president sit back, pull out of Iraq, and city after city where so many Americans shed their blood for, to, to help save Iraq and, and turn Iraq around into an ally of the United States, one by one, those cities are falling. Right. The reason why the president did that was because we had an American soldier who was held captive, and he made an exchange, which of course you would never agree with, because nothing the president does you Not would true. agree with. But you, ma'am, I think, are the most dangerous person in who's society. Who's which ma'am? Um, with the Heritage Foundation. No, she's I, not. The, Brigitte, she's with ACT for America. No, ACT, I'm ACT. I'm sorry. America. With ACT. I think that you are the most dangerous person, because to say things like, Moderate Muslims supposedly are, are not terrorists, are supposedly are not dangerous. The majority of Muslims in this country and in this world are safe, loving people who want peace and who want to protect. Those Nigerian girls were Muslim, by the way, as well. It wasn't just Boko Haram. It was the, those Nigerian right. girls. Right. We're not hearing from the moderates. The Regular Americans, the, lay people, think that they have a negative opinion of the, of, of the Muslim, Muslim people because we are only hearing about the murders. We're only hearing about the terrorists. We don't hear from the moderates because they're afraid to speak out. So you, to, to jump on, to, no, like no, to jump on, because no, to, like no, it's not because of conversation. Yes. And it, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be up to us to defend moderate Muslims. They should be speaking out themselves. Her. The difference between me and you yeah. is yeah. I am fluent in the Arabic language and I walk into the mosques in this country and I understand what they say. I walk into Arabic grocery stores in this country. I was just in, in New Morocco Jersey, for in two New York. weeks, ma'am. I, I spend a lot of time I, in a Muslim country. So I, don't tell I, me that I don't understand. My mother tongue is Arabic. I know what they're saying. I know how the society operates. So are you saying that the majority of Muslims are terrorists? I'm not saying that yes the majority no. of her, Muslims I'm not saying the majority of Muslims are terrorists and I did not say that. There are moderate Muslims. The terrorists are only 15 to 25 percent. That less. leaves no. no, it's not less than that. Less the less world no. event shows dangerous. you the facts. No. The facts speak louder than words. You no, are Sean. But Sean. there are 75 percent no, no, no. moderate Muslims me, in the world. Ask, Tamar, the moderate Muslims well, is she a danger by calling out radicalism or is it the people that would strap bombs on their own children in the name of jihad and no. holy war and a Don't promise twist my excuse words, me Sean. in the promise of 72 virgins words. who's more dangerous? Dangerous. Radical Islamists are very dangerous. They are just as dangerous as a person who spews hate and, and tries to change a message, a Muslim message. How did I say that the majority of moderate Muslims are, are somehow no, all right. let me, let me go terrorists. Here. Yeah. You know what's so, da you know what's so dangerous Muslims, about this? You're a very terrorists. dangerous person because these are heroes standing up for the victims of Islam. And let me tell you, I study how sociopaths behave, how psychopaths behave. We see this in the unholy alliance right now with the left and Islam. What they do is when the a vicious ideology, totalitarian ideology attacks us and we're victims, what, what, the, what these people do is they make the perpetrator the victim and the victim the perpetrator. So 
heroes like Pamela Geller that made a memorial grove for Axa Parvez, a 16-year-old Muslim girl. She stood up for the memory of a murdered, honor-killing victim and made a memorial grove for her in Jerusalem Park. And thank you that you did that, Pamela. And she's called an Islamophobe. She's called a hater. So what's happening here is these are the heroes standing up for the victims of Islam. But what we have is an unholy alliance between the left and Islam, and they're making the heroes no, no, the no, perpetrators. No. I, guys, and you're, 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 you're dangerous. We, Jimmy, you're dangerous by shutting us up about talking the evil that we face. We got it. We got to take a break. We're going to come back. Don't go anywhere because our audience obviously is just getting.